Today's speaker is our own Reverend Richard Dingus. Reverend Richard Dingus serves as a minister of our church. He uses his theological training and his studies of near-death experiences to help each of us understand our own purpose here in our lifetime. We are pleased to have him on our pastoral council and his experience as a pastor at several churches brings to our church a wealth of experience and knowledge that we are so grateful to have. Dick has also served on our board of directors, serving as our president and leading our church. He recently retired as a hospice chaplain and now stays home with his family and tends his garden, a place where he can reflect and a place where he finds peace. Let's give Dick Dingus a warm fellowship welcome. Good morning. Uh, today, I'd like us to think of ourselves as God's computers. God has a supply house, and God has sent us from it into the world with default settings. We have adjusted the settings. We did not use virus protection. And now the computer is not working properly. We need to have our computers cleaned and to hit the default button to return to the factory settings. Today's service is a healing service and we will open and use the healing program after we have returned to default settings. You are like a computer, a complex network of interconnected systems. The psalmist expressed this millennia ago. He wrote, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It's amazing to think about it. Your workmanship is marvelous, Psalm 139. The way we hear is an example of how marvelously we are made. I went to the otolaryngologist recently to find out why I have been experiencing a hearing loss in my right ear. And on the wall in his office was a chart that described all the parts of the ear that make it work. It's incredibly complex. The eardrum vibrates the sound. Tiny bones on the other side of the eardrum amplify the sound vibrations and send them to the cochlea, which is a snail-shaped structure filled with liquid. An elastic partition runs from one end of the cochlea to the other, splitting it into upper and lower parts. On top of this membrane sit key hearing structures. Once the vibrations cause the fluid inside the cochlea to ripple, the traveling wave forms along the membrane. Sensory hair cells, which sit on top of it, ride the wave. As the hair cells move up and down, microscopic hair-like projections bump against an overlying structure and bend. Bending causes pore-like channels at the tips to open up. Then, when that happens, chemicals rush into the cells, causing an electrical signal. The auditory nerve carries this electrical signal to the brain and translates it into what we hear as sound. What an ingeniously complex design. It's almost incredible. If I were challenged to create a hearing system, I might draw all these parts out on paper. Do you think that Shark Tank would buy it? They would say, it will never work. It has too many weak points. You could never get all those parts to work together. Yet this is only one of myriad systems working to perfection in the human body. And most of all, most of the time, we're unaware of any of these systems because everything's working perfectly. We only notice it when something stops working. We are wonderfully made. 
Being made implies a maker. The best description of God I have found is the intelligent life force within all things, causing them to grow into greater complexity in relationship to the other life forms around them. Wouldn't that account for what people observe as evolution? Paul got close to this in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, when he wrote, Since earliest times men have seen the earth and sky and all God made, and have known of his existence and great eternal power. In other words, when we look at the wonders of the creation, we intuitively know that there must be a wonderful creator. And the wonder never ends. Electron microscopes and radio telescopes never get to the end of discovery. There is always something beyond our perception and our understanding. Perhaps the most wonderful part of us is our DNA. This determines every aspect of our individual development. Now I have a story. Mary Sparrow Dancer had a transcendent experience. She wrote about it in her book, Love Song of the Universe. It was in meditation that she went to a place that she could only describe as the most beautiful cathedral. She felt the presence of God strongly. She sensed that angels were all around her. She knew it was the most holy place. She asked, where am I? The answer came, your DNA. This is another way to think about God living in us. I have frequently heard Susan Thomas say that God is living through us, in us, and as us. We are wonderfully made. Near-death experiencers tell us that we are fractals of God. A fractal is a smaller part of the whole and the smaller parts contain all the elements of the whole. For example, a drop of seawater is a fractal of the ocean. John and the Apostle and near-death experiencers have told us that God is love. So at our essence, we are fractals of love. We were programmed for love, but we got away from that. The car comes from the manufacturer, but we customize it. Recently, my grandson acquired the used car of his choice from a dealer. It needed some minor repairs. And before we could bring it home, he had already ordered new seats and new racing seat belts. We modify the factory settings. Isaiah put it this way, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have gone everyone to his own way. Paul the Apostle put it this way. All we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what is the way to get back on track? The message of the Gospels is to repent. This means to turn around and go the other way. John the Apostle wrote that people choose evil and they move away from the light so that their deeds will be hidden. John's message is to turn around and walk toward the light. I use this biblical imagery because it's not only the familiar way of describing the spiritual journey, but it also describes our trajectory and consciousness beyond the physical. If you follow the light and love while in the body, you will arrive at light and love after leaving the body, and vice versa. God doesn't send anyone to heaven or hell. We find our own way by our choices. But today, I would like to describe getting back on track in terms of a computer. The radio in my van has a volume control, which is part of the computer system. When my granddaughter wants to hear loud rap music, I can adjust the speakers so that most of the sound comes out of the back set of speakers in the van where she sits. But when I want to hear equal surround sound, I can find another station, press default, and return it to factory settings. We are God's computers, 
And God gives us the freedom to adjust settings. And when we are ready, we can press default and return to the recommended settings for optimal performance. Default is what happens when a person has a spiritually transformative experience, an STE. This, I believe, is the same as being, quote, born again, unquote. That's how it's understood in the religious context. In biblical studies, it's often referred to as regeneration. But the same dynamic is experienced by persons who have no religious leanings, but who have had near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, and even extraterrestrial abduction experiences. This spiritual defaulting is happening on a worldwide scale and transcends the boundaries of religions. It's the wave of the new earth to come. The default operation involves a return to the factory where we come to know and extend love. The first part happens when a person is immersed in the energy of love while apart from the physical body. Near-death experiencers talk about the oneness of love and all that is. They say that everything is made of love, including ourselves, and everything is connected. The second part happens after the near-death experience. It's choosing for one's life to express the truth of oneness and love. This two-part learning process is how I learned to play the guitar. First, I learned with my head what my fingers need to do to play a chord. Then I had to teach my fingers how to do that. Persons who have had a spiritual awakening through a transcendent experience can choose not to follow through with step two. They may choose to ignore it, but those who do choose may continue opening the download for even up to seven years. The goal is to apply what is learned with the head and known in the heart. Apply the love that is the factory default setting. In A Course in Miracles, Jesus taught that we are to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance at every occasion. And then we are to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't just act automatically. Marlon Colley was told this by his angels. Here is Marlon's report. The angel that spoke with me said, Marlon, always ask permission before you help someone. Sometimes we have gone to long lengths to set up a problem for someone to learn from, only to have you see them struggling with it, and without asking heaven for permission, you rush in, take the problem and the pain or danger or suffering upon yourself. Then, after it's all over, we have to take the trouble to reset up a problem similar to that one so the person can learn and grow spiritually. It's good, Marlon, that you know how to handle the problem, but we were trying to help them learn too. Marlon, always ask for permission. Until you get a clear yes to help them, do not do anything except to pray for them, to make the best decisions, and to learn what they are supposed to learn. A near-death experiencer reported the same thing recently on a, the Facebook near-death experiencer group. Always ask God first. After refer, returning to the default settings, your life will be transformed into an extension of God's love. You will have less interest in making money and more interest in communing with nature. If you have a near-death experience, you will not fear death which you may want to get back to the bliss of heaven so much that you will consider killing yourself. It's a struggle to stay in this world once you've experienced heaven. You might not be able to wear a wristwatch anymore. It will stop until you take it off. Street lights may go out when you walk under them and come back on as you walk away. Marlon Colley experienced this. Someone on the Facebook near-death experience group reported that this happened to her also. Computers and electronic equipment may malfunction. 
This happened at Virginia Beach Friends of the International Association for Near-Death Studies when PMH Atwater was the speaker many years ago. We couldn't get the microphone to work. It was an unusual humming in the system. We had to plug and unplug it until she came over and made friends with the computer. You will likely be more sensitive to medicines and need to take only a much smaller dose than prescribed. You may become a vegetarian. You may be overwhelmed by the negative feelings of people in crowds, and so you may seek solitude. You may come to believe in reincarnation, having, having experienced past lifetimes in your near-death experience. All in all, you will be readied to live on the new earth with increased psychic abilities in harmony with nature and other human beings. In short, your life will be changed. The adjustments you made to the factory settings and the viruses of this world will be removed and you will be defaulted. One thing you will need is company. You may be so changed that your friends and family won't feel comfortable relating to you anymore. You will have different values. You won't drink and party as before. You'll be straight honest and helpful to everyone you see in need. There are groups made just for you, and this church is one of them. www.fellowshipoftheinnerlight.com is where you can learn more about it. Other groups can be accessed online at www.iands.org. Are you ready to press the default button? You say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Restore me in your likeness and image, unquote. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit takes place. You will receive a flood of energy from the spiritual realm. You may speak in other tongues. You will run and not be weary. You will be as happy as never before in this lifetime. And it is in this energized state that we will be best able to extend the healing love of God. It happened with my mother. She said that after she came to Jesus, she could pray for people and they would be healed. If you're not ready, don't worry. If you need to be defaulted, and not everybody needs to be because they're already on this right spiritual track, if you need to be defaulted and won't press the button, then someone else may help you. A higher being, perhaps your own higher self. But either way, of your own conscious choosing or beyond, you will be immersed in the transformational energy of love and then returned to your earth body to decide to unpack it or not. You can avoid a lot of trouble by just meditating. Get in touch with your higher self. Invite your higher self, your guides, Jesus, to work with you. You will get all the help you need you don't need to kill yourself or die temporarily. You can align yourself with God just by occupying your conscious mind in order to receive from your subconscious. Some people do this by pondering their dreams, others by working in the garden, others by praying the rosary. Now for the healing part of the service. Today I would like us to apply the love our fractal essence to focusing on healing on a global scale, but not to ignore local needs. I would like to draw on a message from Matthew Ward. Matthew died in an automobile accident, but afterward he began communicating with his mother Susie, who still lives in her physical body on earth. He sends monthly messages. In his August message, he said that we could make a difference by visualizing the earth immersed in gold and white light and by visualizing people of all ages and races smiling and laughing as they dance around with each other and play with animals. He also spoke of the most positive of developments. He said we have help and quote, assistance will keep expanding until everyone in your world is prospering with comfortable housing, desired education, health care, and nutritious food and pure water in abundance, unquote. That is a good future for everyone. 
So let us ask for help and visualize these positive global changes. Let us pray. Loving God and heavenly host, we ask that you amplify the healing energy we are about to generate to bring about positive changes for humankind and for the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Now let us visualize the earth immersed in golden white light. People of all ages and races smiling and laughing as they dance around with each other and play with animals. population on earth prospering with comfortable housing, desired education, health care, and nutritious food and pure water in abundance. Safety for persons unable to get out of Afghanistan and effective resettlement of those who did. Satisfaction of needs for those affected by Hurricane Ida Healing and health for those coping with COVID-19. Safe passage for persons out of fire zones around the world. the peaceful ending of wars and terrorism. The restoration of the earth to its natural beauty and health. For abundance to feed the world's children and adults. And now let us focus our attention on local needs. Would you please speak your request? For my grandsons. Chris and Ashton. For Derek Moore and his family. Loving God, we offer these visualizations to bring about your goal of renewing the earth 
and all its peoples. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Dick. That was beautiful. I think I'm still there in that meditation. Yeah, I know I am. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for those words.